I've been to quite a few Chinatowns around yeah. the world, but I really like Sydney's, and I think... I do too. Good, good, fantastic. Yeah. And I think our point of difference is yeah. that we're so close to Asia that we don't just have the Chinese to thank for our Chinatown, but we've got other influences from, you know, other countries in Asia, like Malaysia. Yeah, because you're Thailand. Malaysian, aren't you? Exactly, that's right. Yeah, you've got Thai town, I suppose you'd call it, Korea yeah. town here as well, yep. but a bit smaller than Chinatown. That's right, yeah. yeah. But the great thing about us being so close to Asia is that I think a lot of Asian ingredients are finding a, their way into Australian yeah. everyday cooking. I've noticed that more in supermarkets as well. You find like bok choy, which wouldn't have been here five, ten years ago. That's right. That's amazing. One of my favourite places, I get dumplings everywhere I go, it's my favourite food, sure. it's just down there. And you know, there's everywhere here. You can find any kind of food, really. Now, yeah. being Malaysian, I'm yeah. partial to Malaysian cooking, so I'm going to show you one of my favourite Malaysian restaurants. Awesome. Not only that, I'm going to cook you a Malaysian flavoured really? meal and show you about how Malaysian flavours are finding their way into Australian cooking. That's fantastic. The stage has got so much better. <laughs> I'm going to find a new restaurant and I'm going to get some food. Sounds good. In Sydney, the cuisine is a real mix of the many nationalities that call this city home. But as Jackie said, the flavours from neighbouring countries like Malaysia, Thailand and China have arguably had the greatest impact on the food scene here. This is something she is very passionate about. And as I came to learn, Jackie's speciality is Malaysian street food. She's so good at cooking the stuff that fans have given her the title of being the high priestess of Malaysian cuisine. And one place she loves to grab a meal is Chinteria, in a part of the city known as Darling Harbour. What do you want me to do? How confident are you in the kitchen? Oh, very confident. Okay, oh. so we're talking Iron Chef versus no. Hell's Kitchen. Think, kid who's just left home trying to boil eggs. Okay, that's a good start, good <laughs> yeah. start. Now, what we're going to do, we're not going to try and cook you a completely traditional Malaysian dish from okay. scratch because we're going to take advantage of Australia's fresh ingredients, things right. like our fresh salmon. Perfect. So, should, um, shall I get you to throw this on the uh, grill? Yes, okay, okay, I can do that. Let me just drizzle some oil All right. on here a little bit. Let's get this out of the way. One thing I've always wanted to know is how do you get the salmon to stay, you know, not do it too undercooked and then too dry? I always do too dry. Well, see, the thing about salmon is that it tends to keep cooking after you take it off the grill. So right. what you want to do is take it off before it completely cooks through. Oh, wow. And just watch this yeah. here. You want, it, you want it to stay pink in the middle when you take it right. off. In terms of what we're going to use for mm. the sauce, we're going to do a little bit of fusion because Malaysian food really is just about fusion. Because right. we draw together all the best influences of our three major immigrant cultures to bring together a really, really unique flavour. So now, I we're not going before, to... Yeah. That's right. We're See, not going to try and cook this from scratch because we don't have time, but we've got these fantastic cooking okay. aids. What's this? Do you this want to have the, a look at this? The dolly meat curry paste. That's right. So this is what you'd use at home. Like if you didn't have time, yeah. you'd grab a dolly meat paste and curry paste and that's what you would use. Totally. Especially when you, you know, when you're just coming home from a long day at work and yeah. you want to whip up dinner oh, exactly, for the whole family. Yeah. This is fantastic. So let's just throw that okay, on if so you want to open it up and just, just toss rip it, it into open the and saucepan. And just pour it in. It's that easy. Exactly. And we're just going to add some coconut cream to that. Okay. This is fantastic because then I can just go down the shops, grab myself a nice dolly curry paste and I can pretend I'm you. Absolutely, so I can just be yeah. You do this. That's right, and you can call it a Morgan's Malaysian cuisine. Yeah, Morgan's Malaysian cuisine. Let's just throw there, some of this in. Okay, and I'm just going to add a bit of water okay. to this. Do you want me to stir that? Yep. Hey, there's a whole bunch of different pastes here. That's right. How do you know which one to use? That's a very good question. I get a lot of people hung up on the fact, like say for instance, this one says seafood curry paste, yeah. but you know what? This actually works really well with red meat. I've tried it before. Really? So it's really just your own personal preference. What we're using here with the salmon is yeah. actually meat curry paste. I saw paste. that, yeah, that's what that's I wanted right. to ask. Because you can, so you can mix them up. It's Absolutely. not like just, no, it's just you, chicken, you can be... That's right, you're not tied to any particular kind of meat. Is that what Malaysian cooking is all about? Yeah, totally, but, because we're all about adapting yeah. and about fusion. So we're just playing around with different flavors right. and different cooking techniques and different ingredients. So that's cool, so if you've got like, you've got some meat at home, like say beef, but you've got this in the fridge. That's right, or yeah. cupboard. You can still use the seafood one. Totally, totally. Try it one day and tell I'm me going how to. you go. I'm loving Malaysian food. And then I'll come over for dinner. Yes, that'd be good. And hopefully I'll be able to cook something as nice as you can. 
We'll see about that. Well, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> While we were busy creating magic in the kitchen, the staff at Chinteria were frantically moving around us, cooking their own masterpieces. Lunch service is a busy time, and judging by the amount of people coming here, there's no doubt the food is sensational. The air became thick with the fragrances of garlic, chili and fresh herbs, but the sounds of frying and dishes clanging adding to the atmosphere. It's a real hive of activity. Now, speaking of activity, with the simple salmon dish done, it was time to cook dessert. Let's just crack a, about four eggs in there as well. Four eggs? Yep. And then I'll get you to beat that up as well. OK. Uh, yolks and everything? Yep. Uh, shell? I'm quite good at getting the shell in there. Uh, shell's always good. Good bit of uh, a good calcium. Bit of crunch. That's right. Do you want to mix that up? Yep. If you can, just yep. quickly just try and beat it up a little yep, bit. Yep, I got it. OK. Just toss a couple more slices of bread in. Okay. Just let it soak through properly. Okay. And I've got some butter here. I'm just going to dot this tray with some butter. And that's to stop it sticking to the that's bottom. That's correct. Yep. I remember Mum telling me when I was a kid, make sure you grease the tray. Grease the tray. Oh, always, always forget to grease the tray. We can oh. toss a couple more slices of bread in there. Yeah, we've got heaps of mixture. Yeah. And I put that like. Yeah. Oh, and they're, they're working in the background, aren't they? This is where the uh, Malaysian slant comes into it. This is a Kaya, again, a Dolly brand okay. product. And it's essentially a coconut jam. So this is like a spread you'd put on bread? That's right, yeah. Wow. But we're throwing it into our bread and butter pudding. OK, so I'm just sprinkling a little bit more sugar on this. That looks amazing. OK, let's just finish up this jar. OK, I'm just going to try this. This just needs to go into the oven for about 20 minutes, half an hour. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, cool. I'll put this in the oven. Good. This way? Yep. Oh, I am so taking credit for that. It looks delicious. I figured I keep banging on about this stuff. So to save you emailing and asking me what I used, here's a gratuitous product shot. Next thing you know, I'll be selling knives on the show. It's still moist in the middle. Malaysian twist. Mm. That is unbelievable. Good, I'm glad you oh, enjoyed it. Oh, it's so tasty. The smell of that pudding, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish that before trying that. Do you mind if I try this? Go for your life. Oh, this is great. I'll just That's have a... just tuck into it. I'll just have a little bit. 